On today's World Insight, an international panel on climate change with the Chinese Minister of Ecology and Environment. Meaningful insights on why climate goals like carbon neutrality matter. And a clarion call for international cooperation from words to deeds. That number 10 ultimately says to me that as a global community, we failed to control the virus. Here is our host, Tian Wei. Hello and welcome to World Insight. I'm Tian Wei in Beijing. This year's Davos Agenda aims to tackle some of the humanity's biggest challenges, climate change and the pandemic. On Wednesday, the Chinese Minister of Ecology and Environment, Huang Renqiu, and the American Special Presidential Envoy for Climate, John Kerry, are both participating in the panel entitled Mobilizing Action on Climate Change. But due to time difference, they're attending two different sessions. Let's take a listen to what the Chinese Environmental Minister, Huang Renqiu, said during his session. The Paris Agreement is in the implementation stage. For this reason, I make three suggestions. First, consensus on cooperation. All parties should adhere to the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change, the goals and objectives set by the Paris Agreement. Developed countries should effectively bridge the gap between actions and commitments before 2020. Climate change and economy, poverty reduction, health, security and other fields, issues are deeply intertwined. Countries, especially developing countries, are facing the urgent need to achieve climate goals under the framework of sustainable development. Developed countries should take the lead in action. The third is to strengthen mutual learning, and all parties must reach consensus on the basis of mutual benefit and win-win results. China is willing to work with all parties to promote this year's response to climate change. The conference will achieve positive results and share a bright future of green, low-carbon and sustainable development. That's Chinese Minister Wang Renqiu on climate change issues. In this panel, which I had the honor to host, other speakers also give their thoughts on how can we accelerate efforts to avoid tipping over the point of no return on climate change. Here's an excerpt of that. Earlier, the Chinese side already outlined their specific agenda, action, and plan. Now, here's the term for Europe and also for your country, Spain. The first of them, thinking in terms of one community. So it is our own task being responsible of the government, company, or local community. I think that this is very important. And the other issue is how far we can reach uh, linking values such as prosperity, inclusiveness, opportunities, cooperation with climate action. And this is what Europe tries to do when thinking about a concrete uh, set of policies and regulation to be the first continent to become carbon neutral. Uh, Mr. Momentale, why sustainable development and also uh, fight against climate change so important now for global companies? I think many people don't realize that uh, the companies operate in very different systems all over the world, different cultures, and we always talk about shareholder capitalism, but that's really a, a US-centric uh, thinking, because in, in the US there's a law which says that the board of directors has to act in the benefit of the shareholders. Very few people know that in Europe that's not the case. Many European countries, for example Switzerland, uh, the law is actually that the board of directors has to act uh, for the company, in the interest of the company. So it's a multi-stakeholder concept. But of course, Europe has been heavily influenced by the U.S., and so there's a, there's uh -huh. a little overlay here. But here, having uh, friends from, from China and Japan, two societies I've, I visit a lot, 
obviously they have a very different approach to that. There's, a, there's more ancient philosophy behind it. There's the harmonious society concept in China, for example. And it is obvious to me that my clients who are in, in China and, and Japan, for example, when they take decisions, it's always multi-stakeholder. It's always thinking about the consequences the decisions will have on the overall society, on the employees, et cetera. Ms. Koike, uh, I understand that your metropolitan government has been working very hard on a plan and action about uh, green recovery toward a decarbonization. Tell us more about the details, particularly from a locality's perspective, please. The Tokyo Metropolitan Government is advancing studies for the creation of a green finance market, and we hold a preparatory meeting with experts on February 3rd uh, next week. So by establishing itself as a leader in the world's green finance market, Tokyo will make sure that financial flows are re redirected to ESG investing and invite investment into the future from both with, uh, within and outside Japan, and of course from Switzerland. Mr. Shen, what are some of the most important agenda for you? How to keep the balance some of the earlier speakers already talked about? Yeah, I propose a uh three step, step recommendations that I have for all CEOs and industry leaders around the world to make this happen. And that is commit, operationalize, and engage. First, we should commit ourselves to the goal and declare that this is your personal priority as a CEO, otherwise it's not gonna happen. And then operationalize. In other words, set specific milestone and develop actionable plans to get there without clearly defined reduction goals and strategy and actions the slogan alone can be quite hollow in a hurry and then third engage we need to collaborate with many other stakeholders such as public sectors society at large to tackle this issue together as a team. That's an excerpt from an earlier discussion at Davos Agenda, which I hosted on climate change. In our future programs, we're going to bring you more details of this conversation. And you're watching World Insights with me, Tian Wei. Coming up in the program, a clarion call for international cooperation from words to deeds next on pandemic control. Unheard of challenges uncertainty, unprecedented agenda-setting efforts, not in the snow and ice world of Davos, but still aims to rally the minds and hearts toward cooperation and bridge building. Join me in sessions I host on the Davos Agenda and in in-depth interviews with some of the world's most respected minds. From all corners of the world, drawing up the Davos Agenda. The world is changing fast, taking all our lives with it. But we can change it too, by seeking answers to problems through discussions and debates. On World Insight, I ask direct questions to real people in the know, seek genuine answers, but respect diverse perspectives. Our live global debates tackle the most critical issues head on. World Insight with Tian Wei. Go beyond the headline.